Could this be your next Lenormand deck? Oh, I didn't even notice. Look at the side. I think that this is such an interesting and juicy deck to dig into and talk about, and you'll see why. One of the main reasons, though, is there's a lot of new takes. So in this one, she calls it the Fire Flower. I mostly want to know what you guys think about that. So please be sure to comment below as we're going through the video. You know, what do you think about replacing the Lily's card with something else? Like, I'm just so curious. You'll see, like... My recording, I just kind of set it up haphazard so I could just show you. I was just really eager to open it. <laughs> but I wanted to show you my real reaction. I did receive this for free from the publisher. I am not letting that influence my take on this deck and that uh, I am still giving my honest opinion. Let's get to unboxing. Hey all, I got some happy mail from Inimitable books, and I cannot wait to take a look at what's inside. Okay, reaching inside, and it is the Enchanted Glass Lenormand deck. I'm loving how pretty the box is. I'm a sucker for that like holographic vibe. Maybe it's the millennial in me with like the the Pokemon cards, you know. It opens up and has a little booklet here. Okay, so I just want to go straight to the cards and then look at the book. So it's like stained glass. Okay, so this is making more sense to me. So let's take a look here. Here's the writer. Is that like a ram? That's what it looks like there. Clover. Ship and the house okay and i'm just going to take a peek through this here okay so i just went ahead and pulled out some of the cards that really stuck out to me that i i really like and i like the depiction of them so the first one is the tree i just like this tree card <laughs> i also like how there's people beneath it enjoying it there's fruit growing on the tree i just like that whole aspect of the tree i think that it really embodies the essence of the card I really like this clouds card because I love seeing a person and having the hair or the head emphasized. Really like that. I feel like we don't see that. I think this is a really unique and cool take on the clouds card. Um, some other cards, the moon. I just think this, this is beautiful. I love how the moon phases are surrounding the card. It's just I love that attention to detail. Also, we have the key. I like how the person is in the keyhole. And then we have the anchor. So these are some of just my favorites that I, I pulled out at first glance. So one thing I love about this deck right away is that you have the words here, big and bold. And these are small cards. So let me take a tarot card for you. This is the Radiant Rider weight next to it. You can see how much smaller it is than like a typical tarot card is. And this is great. So this is gonna be very good for grand tableaus. It's a really great size. It's also good cardstock. It's still very shuffleable, but it's it's not flimsy and cheap feeling. It definitely has a nice um, feel to the deck. And it has it's it has a nice like sheen on it without being overly overly shiny. So I really like that. I wanted to talk about the book because there are certainly some cards that are a little bit different or have a, a slightly different take on them than traditional Lenormand does. So I wanted to take a look at what those mean in the book. This is kind of a thick book. Does it say how many pages there are? I don't know if it says how many pages there are, but this is a pretty thick, high quality little book that's attached to it. The thing I really like about this so far is that it's giving you, reading the sentence, yes, I love, I love framing it like a sentence. It talks about different techniques for reading. It talks about chaining, talks about mirroring, and then we dig into the cards and their meanings. Love, love, love the idea of cardinal concepts. Really like that. 
it's really about I call it essence, like the essence of the card. And I think that that's really great how it's it's distilled there with um, with their take on that. So looking at the meanings here, I wanted to go to some that are a bit different than tradition. So we have 25 contract, which is in place of the ring. So let's flip to that. So we have contract for instead of the ring and it says commitment, cooperation, promises. Uh, so it's very similar to the ring card. Yeah. So I want to see why I always like to know why in traditional Lenormand decks, this card would be represented by the ring. But when looking into its meaning, I thought nothing was more symbolic of a commitment to a writer like myself than a book contract. Okay, so it's just another depiction of that. The only thing that we do kind of lose with this one is the cyclical nature of the ring card. So that's something I wonder if that's listed under the moon um, instead. I'm going to look. Okay, I just had to take a second. So the letter is typically number 27. So I grabbed the Rana George Lenormand um, that's next to me because I had to double check myself. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's 27. <laughs> so yeah, so the letter is going is different. Um, it's number 31 in this one. So this is going to be tricky for tableaus. Um, it's something to just be aware of and make adjustments as needed. They're all still here. All the <laughs> cards are still here. They're just in slightly different order than what we are maybe used to. One major difference is the idea of the fire flower instead of the lilies. I'm actually not mad at this at all because the lilies is a very interesting and kind of paradoxical and sometimes outdated card in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm all about finding workarounds for the lily. So in this one she calls it the fire flower and the, the cardinal concepts, the essence, is sensuality, morality, wisdom. She acknowledges kind of the paradox with the lily's card and what it can mean. And so um, she talks about the fire flower as a card that represents experiencing life through the senses, in particular touch, smell, and taste. So really being present is what I'm hearing. So if you're not a fan of the lilies, this is kind of a cool <laughs> alternative to it. Another card that's different, let's actually look at 36, the cross. This one says willpower. So it does have the same meanings as the traditional cross in a lot of ways, but it focuses more on the personal qualities of duty, resolve, integrity. She decided to change the cross to willpower because whatever is your cross to bear in life, you'll need willpower and grit to carry it. She considered a lot of different options for this, it seems. She basically decided to go to willpower and it has to do with her ancestry and she has kind of Scottish root to a name that means um, resolute protector or willpower. So that makes sense to me. I will say though, <laughs> with Lenormand, like there are bad cards and good cards. <laughs> and I think I kind of like having a card that's like, yep, this card's just negative. And like, of course, there's different contexts. I'm not saying in every single context, it's negative forever. But oftentimes, like it kind of is. I don't dislike this. I think this is kind of a cool take on it. But also, it's like, yeah, let's not like wash over the the cross fully. Willpower, it's not the antithesis of it by any means. It's definitely like an aspect of the cross, but I feel like we're losing something with, with that a little bit. That's just my personal take. So we have the storm card here for 11 in place of the whip. And it does have a lot of the same cardinal concepts, conflict, opposition, arguments. I love that cardinal concepts. It's really good. I do like the idea of a storm. Like I'm all about replacing the whip card. <laughs> I don't like the depiction of it. I'm not about it. In general, I'm not mad at replacing it. <laughs> that being said, I like the idea of repetition being part of the whip and without having the ring and not having the whip, I'm like, where's the repetition going to come from? Because that occurs a lot in a Lenormand reading. So that's something I'm a little bit concerned with with this deck. 
but like I like in general the concept of of the storm. Um, I really do enjoy that. I really appreciate the art artistry on the cards. I appreciate the clarity with the number and with the title of the card. I love the backing of it. And I like um, that it's tied to her personal story, to the artist's personal story. That feels really um, special and unique. Oh, I didn't even notice. Look at the side. Wow, that's cool. I love the holographic vibes on it. Yes, I am very much into that gleam and glint. So that is the Enchanted Glass Lenormand. I would love to know what you thought of this video, especially when it comes to those new cards. I gave you a little bit of my opinion, but I want to know what you think. Put it down below. Also, if you are wanting to learn Lenormand, I do have that free mini course. You can find it here, emilyrosedivination.com slash mini course. And if you want more videos like this, you need to let me know. I have this whole box in my closet just full of decks. I'm a little bit of a deck snob and so picky. So I have all these decks that I haven't even really looked at. So if you want me to to do like a, a look through of some decks, I might do some giveaways with it. So let me know what you think. Thank you all so much for watching and you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.